So what exactly is a conical pendulum? Well, let's suppose we take a rope, a massless rope of distance d, and let's place one end, let's attach one end to the ceiling, and let's attach a ball or some other object to the second end. And let's allow our object to rotate, to move as shown. Now notice the shape that our moving object creates with this rope is a cone. And that's exactly why this is known as a conical pendulum. Now, if we look at the two-dimensional shape of our object, we'll see that our object is actually undergoing uniform circular motion. So that means we can talk about the object's velocity, we can talk about the object's radial acceleration, and we can talk about the object's period. So let's try to find what the formula for velocity and for the period of the following object moving in our conical pathway. So, let's suppose that our distance of our rope is d, and let's say that our radius of the circumscribed circle is r, and let's say the angle theta is the angle between the y-axis and between our distance d, our rope. So once again, we're assuming the rope is massless, and that means the force in our rope remains undiminished, it's constant. So. Let's try to figure out what the velocity formula is. Let's begin by labeling all the forces acting on our object in this position. So let's look all the forces acting along the y-axis and let's then examine all the forces acting along our x-axis. So we have two forces acting along our y-axis. Our first force points downward along the y-axis is the force due to gravity, our gravitational force m times g. What force is acting upward? Well, notice that our force, our tension in a rope, is acting at an angle. And because it's acting at an angle, we should have a y component to that force as well as an x component. And that's exactly what we have. So our y component force is the magnitude of this force multiplied by cosine of the angle theta, while the x component force is simply this force multiplied by sine of the angle theta. So, notice that we have no motion along the y-axis. So, if we examine our moving object, our object is not moving along the y-axis. So, there's zero motion. That means there's no acceleration along our y-axis. So, if we sum up all the forces acting on our object along the y-axis, the sum is equal to zero. We can set that equal to zero. So, let's choose going up to be positive, going downward to be negative. So we have this force, force T, our tension in a rope, multiplied by cosine of the angle theta minus the gravitational force equals zero. What about the forces acting on the object along the x-axis? Well, we only have one force, and our force is equal to the tension in the rope multiplied by sine of the angle theta. Now the question is, is our object actually accelerating along the x-axis at this position? And the answer is, yes it is. It's accelerating because the object is undergoing uniform circular motion along a two-dimensional plane. So that means our object is in fact accelerating along our x-axis. So we simply say the sum of all the forces acting along the x-axis is equal to, well it's simply one force, this force, which is equal to mass of that object multiplied by radial or centripetal acceleration. And that equals m times v squared divided by r because radial acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r. v is simply our velocity and r is simply our radius. So let's take equation one and let's rearrange it. Let's solve for the tension in our rope. So we get that the tension in our rope, or Ft, is equal to our gravitational force, m times g, divided by cosine of the angle theta. And now, let's take this and let's replace this into our equation number two. So we get 
our force tension, which is simply m times g divided by cosine multiplied by sine of the angle of failure equals m times v squared divided by r. So now we can take this equation and notice that the m's on both sides will cancel out. So mass has nothing to do with our velocity of the moving object, an object that is moving in the following conical fashion. So we simply solve for our velocity and we get the following result. Velocity is equal to radical, the square root of our g times sine of the angle of theta multiplied by r, our radius, divided by the cosine of the angle of theta. Now let's suppose that I don't want it in terms of radius, that I want it in terms of the distance of my uh, rope. So I simply use my sine trigonometric function. Sine of the angle theta is equal to the sine r divided by the distance d. So I rearrange and I see that my distance r, my radius, is equal to the hypotenuse multiplied by my sine of the angle theta, where my hypotenuse is simply my distance of my rope. So I can rewrite my equation in the following notation. Radical g times sine of the angle theta squared multiplied by d divided by cosine of the angle theta. So this is the formula for my velocity of the object when we're dealing with a conical pendulum. What about the period? Well, recall the relationship between period and velocity. Velocity is equal to our circumference of the circle created by the moving object. So 2 times pi times r divided by our period. So we can rearrange this equation into the following notation. So we replace our r and we replace r with distance times sine of the angle theta and we see that our uh, period is equal to 2 pi times sine of the angle theta times d divided by the velocity v. And now we take this velocity and plug it into here and we get the following result. So we rearrange some things and our final formula is our period is equal to 2 times pi multiplied by the radical of cosine of the angle of theta multiplied by distance of the rope divided by g, our gravitational constant. So the formula for velocity when our object is undergoing a conical pendulum-like motion is here and the formula for our period is shown here.